forever with him, with the cavern-filling bulk of the creature machine, with the all-mind, soulless world he had become. He was earth, and we were the fruit of that earth, and though he had eaten us, he would never digest us. We could not die. We had tried it. We had attempted suicide. Oh, one or two of us had. But Am had stopped us. I suppose we had wanted to be stopped. Don't ask why. I never did. More than a million times a day, perhaps once we might be able to sneak a death past him. Immortal, yes, but not indestructible. I saw that when Am withdrew from my mind and allowed that burning neon pillar still ram deep into the soft gray brain matter, excuse me, and allowed me the exquisite ugliness of returning to consciousness with the feeling of that burning neon pillar still rammed deep into the soft gray brain matter, he withdrew murmuring to hell with you and added brightly, but then you're there, aren't you? The hurricane had indeed precisely been caused by a great mad bird as it flapped its immense wings. We had been traveling for close to a month and Am had allowed passages to open us only sufficient to lead us up there directly under the north pole where it had nightmared the creature for our torment what whole cloth had he employed to create such a beast where had he gotten the concept from our minds from his knowledge of everything that had ever been on this planet he now infested and ruled. From Norse mythology, it had sprung this eagle, this carrion bird, this rock, this... this Hugelmer, the wind creature, hurricane, hurricane incarnate, hurricane incarnate, gigantic. The words immense, monstrous, grotesque, Massive, swollen, overpowering, beyond description, there on a mound rising above us. The, art, the bird of winds heaved with its own irregular breathing, its snake neck arching up into the gloom beneath the North Pole, supporting a head as large as a Tudor mansion, a beak that opened slowly as the jaws... as the jaws of the most monstrous crocodile ever conceived, sensuously, ridges of tufted flesh puckered about two evil eyes, as cold as the view down into a glacial crevasse, ice blue and somehow moving liquidly. It heaved once more and lifted its great sweat-colored wings in a m movement that was certainly a shrug then it settled and slept talons fangs nails blades it slept am appeared to us as a burning bush and said we could kill the hurricane bird if we wanted to eat we had not eaten in a very long time but even so gorister merely shrugged benny began to shiver and he drooled ellen held him ted i'm hungry she said i smiled at her i was trying to be reassuring but it was as phony as Nimdok's bravado. Give us weapons, he demanded. The burning bush vanished and there were two crude sets of, b of bows and arrows and a water pistol lying on the cold deck plates. I picked up a set, useless. Nimdok swallowed heavily. We turned and started the long way back. The hurricane bird had blown us about for a length of time. We could not conceive. Most, <clears throat> most of that time we had been unconscious, but we had not eaten. A month on the march to the bird itself without food. Now 
how much longer to find our way to the ice caverns and the promised canned goods. None of us cared to think about it. We would not die. We would be given filth. and scum to eat of one kind or another or nothing at all. Am would keep our bodies alive somehow in pain, in agony. The birds slept back there for how long it didn't matter. When Am was tired of being there, it would vanish. But all that meat, all that tender meat, as we walked, the lunatic laugh of a fat woman rang high in a high and around us in the computer chambers that led endlessly nowhere. It was not Ellen's laugh, she was not fat, and I had not heard her laugh for 109 years. In fact, I had not heard... We walked, I was hungry. We moved slowly, there was often fainting. and we would have to wait. One day he decided to cause an earthquake. At the same time, rooting us to the spot with nails through the soles of our shoes. Ellen and Nimdok were both caught with a fissure shot when a fissure shot its lightning bolt opening across the floor plates, they disappeared and were gone. When the earthquake was over, we continued on our way. Benny, Gorister, and myself, Ellen and Nimdok, were returned to us later that night, which abruptly became a day as the heavenly legion before them bore as the heavenly legion bore them to us with a celestial choir singing. Go down, Moses. The archangels circled several times and then dropped the hideously mangled bodies. We kept walking, and a while later, Ellen and Nimdok fell in behind us. And a while later, Nim Ellen and Nimdok fell in behind us. They were n no worse for wear. And now Ellen walked with a limp. Am had, lef had left her with that. It was a long trip to the ice caverns to find the canned food. Ellen kept talking about Bing cherries and Hawaiian fruit cocktail. I tried not to think about it. The hunger was something that had come to life, even as Am had come to life. It was alive in my belly, even as we were in the belly of the earth, and Am wanted the similarity known to us. So he heightened the hunger. There is no way to describe the pains that not having eaten for months brought us, and yet we were kept alive, stomachs that were merely cauldrons of acid and bubbling, bubbling, foaming, and bubbling, foaming, always shooting spears of silver thin pain into our chests. It was the pain of the terminal ulcer, terminal cancer, terminal par parasis. It was unending pain, and we passed through the cavern of rats, and we passed through the path of boiling steam, and we passed through the country of the blind, and we passed through the slough of despond, and we passed through the veil of tears, and we came finally to the ice caverns, hor horizonless thousands of miles in which the ice had formed in blue and silver flashes where novas lived in the glass. The down-dropping stalactites as thick and glorious as diamonds that had been made to run like jelly and then solidified in graceful eternities of smooth, sharp perfection. We saw the stack of canned goods and we tried to run to them. We fell in the snow and we got up and went on and Benny shoved us away and went at them and pawed them and gummed them and gnawed at them and he could not open them. Am had not given us a tool to open the cans. Benny grabbed a three-quart can of guava shells and began to batter it against the ice bank. The ice flew and shattered, but the can was merely dented. While we heard the laughter of a fat lady, 
high overhead and echoing down and down and down the tundra. Benny went completely mad with rage. He began throwing cans as we scrabbled about in the snow and ice trying to find a way to end the helpless agony of frustration. There was no way. Then Benny's mouth began to drool and he flung himself on Gorister. In that instant, I felt terrible calm, surrounded by madness, surrounded by hunger, surrounded by everything but death. I knew death was our only way out. Am had kept us alive, but there was a way to defeat him. Not total to defeat, but at least peace. I would settle for that. I had to do it quickly. Benny was eating Gorister's face. Gorster on his side, thrashing snow. Benny wrapped around him with powerful monkey legs, crushing Gorister's waist, his hands locked around Gorister's head like a nutcracker, and his mouth ripping at the tender skin of Gorister's cheek. Gorister screamed with such jagged-edged violence that stalactites fell. They plunged down softly, erect in the receiving snowdrifts. Spears, hundreds of them, everywhere, protruding from the snow. Benny's head pulled back sharply as something gave all at once, and a bleeding, raw, white dripping of flesh hung from his teeth. Ellen's face, black against the white snow, dominoes in chalk dust. Nimdok, with no expression but eyes, all eyes. Gorister half-conscious, Benny now an animal. I knew Am would let it play out. Gorister would not die, but Benny would fill his stomach. I turned half to my right and drew a huge ice spear from the snow. All in an instant, I drove the great ice point ahead of me like a battering ram, braced against my right thigh. It struck Benny on the right side, just under his ribcage, and drove upward through his stomach and broke inside him. He pitched forward and lay still. Gorister lay on his back. I pulled another spear free and straddled him, still moving, driving the spear straight down through his throat. His eyes closed as the cold penetrated. Ellen must have realized what I had decided, even as fear gripped her. She ran at Nimdok with a short icicle as he screamed and into his mouth, and the force of her rush did the job. His head jerked sharply as if it had been nailed to the snow crust behind him. All in an instant... There was an eternity beat of soundless anticipation. I could hear Am draw in his breath. His toys had been taken from him. Three of them were dead, could not be re re revived. He could, he could keep us alive by his strength and talent, but he was not God. He could not bring them back. Ellen looked at me, her ebony features stark against the snow that surrounded us. There was fear and pleading in her manner, the way she held herself ready. I knew we had only a heartbeat before Am would stop us. It struck her and folded toward me, bleeding from the mouth. It struck her and she folded toward me, bleeding from the mouth. It could not read meaning into her expression, and the pain, the pain had been too great, had contorted her face. But it might have been, thank you, it's possible, please. Some hundreds of years may have passed, I don't know. Am has been having fun for some time, accelerating and retarding my time sense. I will say the word now, now. It took ten months to say now. I don't know. I think it has been some hundreds of years. He was furious. He wouldn't let me bury them. It didn't matter. There was no way to dig up the deck plates. He dried up the snow. He brought the night. He roared and sent locusts. It didn't do a thing. They stayed dead. I'd had him. He was furious. I had thought Am hated me before. I was wrong. It was not even a shadow of the hate he now slavered from every printed circuit. He made certain I would suffer eternally and could not do myself in. He left my mind intact. I could dream. I can dream. I can wander. I can lament. I can remember all four of them. I wish... Well, it doesn't take, make any sense. I know I saved them. I know I saved them from what has happened to me, but still, I cannot forget killing them. Ellen's face, it isn't easy. Sometimes I want to. It doesn't matter. Am has altered me for his own peace of mind, I suppose. He doesn't want me to run at full speed into a computer bank and smash my skull, or hold my breath till I faint, or cut my throat on a rusted sheet of metal. 
There are reflective surfaces down here. I will describe myself as I see myself. I am a great soft jelly thing, smoothly rounded with no mouth, with pulsing white holes filled by fog where my eyes used to be, rubbery appendages where once my arms, where once, that were once my arms, bulks rounding down into legless humps of soft slippery matter. I have a moist trail when I move. Blotches of diseased evil gray come and go on my surface as though light is being beamed from within. Outwardly, dumbly, I shamble about a thing that could never have been known as human, a thing whose shape is so alien a travesty that humanity becomes more obscene for the vague resemblance. Inwardly, alone, here, living under the land, under the sea, in the belly of Am, whom we created because our time was badly spent and we must have known unconsciously that he could do it better. At least the four of them are safe at last. Am will be all the matter for that. It makes me a little happier. And yet, Am has won. Simply, he has taken his revenge. I have no mouth, and I must scream.